Minister, can I ask, um, did you see any appetite this morning for an early triggering of any of the sanctions, given the argument you've made that there's, there's already hostilities underway? And second question, do you sense any appetite on the Russian side to take up this offer of a summit, which uh, um, uh, Macron has been trying to broker between uh, Putin and, uh, and Biden? Um, about the, the, the appetite, uh, I think that we have somewhat ambiguous situation now currently as to what we see as a trigger and it's left up to the well to political debate uh, you know what are we expecting on and uh, therefore I think that uh, today well Lithuania mentioned that you know we need to look for more than just the invasion as, as a trigger because there are certain things that are already have begun they already carry a price and they should warrant an answer now, imagine any other country that would be facing such a military buildup on its borders. Obviously, we would be debating it if no invasion would be uh, in, the, in the air. We would have this debate and we would be talking about additional sanctions and whatnot. So therefore, I see no reason not to talk about it now. So I think that it's, uh, again, I will leave that to, to um, uh, leaders of the institutions to, uh, to present the, the, you know, what consensus we have. It's an ongoing debate, and currently this is this is my position that I'm bringing up for for the debate. And your second question was was on the on the summit the attempt to create. Do you see any signs yet as to whether I, the Russian again? Russian side I will repeat what I've said. I don't see any signs from Russian side to uh, to follow the diplomatic path. On, on Belarus, if I can ask uh, for uh, a few more details. First of all, how do you know that the Belarus the, the troops are taking uh, their orders now, as you said, from the decision makers in, in Moscow? And secondly. Is it now, is, is the true presence of Russia and Belarus, they were supposed to leave yesterday, is it now open-ended? Is there a new date where they said they will leave, or what's going on? There, there's a lot of public information about that as well. Uh, Mr. Mr. McKay, uh, a few days, uh, very specifically mentioned that the Belarusian troops will move out uh, from, oh, sorry, Russian troops will move out from Belarusian territory uh, yesterday. And it's no longer yesterday. So there is a clear perception that is uh, who is actually calling the shots in, in, this, in this situation. And it's no longer the Belarusian uh, politicians. Um, sorry, and your second question. Uh, is there a new date at which they're supposed to leave or is it now an open-ended? Uh, I think uh, yesterday what we've heard that it's an open-ended uh, issue. And we're getting very close to, uh, to uh, a referendum, uh, which would then allow those troops to remain uh, indefinitely since um, uh, Belarus will no longer would no longer be a neutral country. Well, I think that the, it has to go both ways. Look, we, it's very difficult to imagine, you know, having a, a nice diplomatic conversation when uh, when we don't have any any sort of um, how should I put it leverage. And uh, if uh, if they're shelling the contact line, if they're attacking uh, Ukrainian institutions uh, with the cyber uh, with cyber attacks and still building up the troops, so it puts uh, you know us in a very uh, uh, difficult situation. So it has to be very clear if we want to have this uh, meaningful discussion is that first of all it is, you know, the escalation has to start. Uh, and therefore I think that the discussion about sanctions is also so much, uh, so much important because it shows that there is an actual muscle behind our, our, our talks from, from Western side. Minister, can you tell us more details about your training mission to Ukraine, as Mr. Kuleba told us, the decision made, what it will be, when it will be, or something it like that? It would this? be best if, if Mr. Burrell uh -huh. then answers those questions. It's, okay. uh, it's a consensus based okay. thing. So. Okay. so decision is made about this? Uh, again. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay, and one last question here. Um, question from the German press agency. So you said that you think that we should think a bit more broadly about what's qualifies as the kind of aggression that could trigger sanctions. Uh, what for you would be the threshold where sanctions could be triggered? Could we, could we do it today? Could we do it this week? Or are we already at that threshold? I think that the discussion about certain thresholds should already begin. Um, so it isn't, that discussion isn't happening yet? Oh, sorry? That 
discussion isn't happening yet. I think we are very much focused, as I mentioned before, about just the, the actual invasion. But, uh, but the damage is already, already happening. So, uh, so I think that there is a possibility to approach the sanction uh, question with um, the response that is already, that um, meets the, the situation on the ground. For example? Uh, what can we sanction? Oh, there, you know, we can sanction the people who are responsible for the uh, false flag information uh, campaigns that are currently happening. You know, we're witnessing you know, tens of them every day, you know, and some of them are supported by a very high level officials from the, from the Russian side. And we are sure that these are false flag uh, of operations in order to, uh, to get us off, off, off guard and, and provide a pretext for, for an attack. So that would already be happening. How, how many of your colleagues within the council uh, think, as you think, that it should be triggered right now? Look, I'm here just to, to present my position. And uh, sometimes, well, Baltic states... Did you receive who, any support from other ministers in the, during the, those conversations? You can say that. I, I can say that we, uh, I feel that we, we received support. Okay. okay. Thank, thank you so, you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.